Hi everyone, let's go through my preferred and alternative scenarios on the low time frame. Starting with an alternative scenario where this is the end of wave 5 and we had an expanded flat in wave A followed by a 3 wave B and eventually looking for a wave C to the downside. There's however two main reasons I don't like this scenario too much at the moment. First of all, this wave B is very very short compared to this wave A. Usually in an ABC, wave A and B have close to a one-to-one -one relationship or maybe the 0 0.618 fifth time for example and then wave c usually is relatively quick as wave c is then an impulse in an expanded flat with b over here hitting the 105 which is the rare target for an expanded flat taken from the high of a to the low of a however wave b as you can see is very short it basically finished in between the 0 0.236 and the 0 0.382 fib time taken from the high of this a to the low of a which is just very short compared to A. And if we look at this wave C, you want to see a powerful impulse to the downside, like for example, the one we have here, or maybe not even this powerful, but at least going down a bit quicker. And now we are going horizontal for quite a while, which of course doesn't really suit this wave C scenario to the downside. Actually, a third one that I think of right now is this wave C target area which consists of these two 1.618, which is the most common target area for a wave C, is kind of in the middle of nowhere um, because we don't really have a lot of structure going on here as well. It's right above one of my target boxes where the target box starts at 24.850 with a nice weekly naked point of control. So I would personally think that if price would come this low, it probably continues to the downside, which then also makes it less likely that this is a wave C target area or even this being a wave C. If we then look at the second alternative scenario, we have wave 5 finishing over here after then a 1, 2, 3, 4 wave 5. So the high time frame as well as the low time frame wave 5 is finished with an ending diagonal. However, I have a problem with this ending diagonal. The reason that it's an alternative as well actually has two reasons. First, this ending diagonal does not look good because of this wave over here. This wave looks to be an impulsive wave and not a three wave structure. So this could be a three wave structure. This can be a three wave. This is then a five wave and then we have a three and another three. But in an ending diagonal, one of the waves cannot be a five wave if the other are three waves. So that's why I don't like this ending diagonal. But in this scenario, if it is an ending diagonal, uh, unlikely though, that's why it's an alternative. This could be a wave one, very, very impulsive wave one though, to be honest. And then wave two retraced to the 0 0.886, which is also a very rare target for a wave two. So we have a bit of a, an awkward ending diagonal. We have a rare wave two target hit over here. Um, and then we have as a third reason this is an alternative and actually just very unlikely is that if this is then an impulse like basically we're looking for a one two and now a bigger three to the downside and the bigger three to the downside has uh, another five waves inside of it so then we could be looking for a one two three four five to end the blue wave three but in this scenario if i'm trying to count this on the lower time frames yeah you could maybe think of like a some sort of a, a leading diagonal the only problem with the leading diagonal, however, is this wave 5, because if we then go to the 15 minute time frame and we look at the count over here, you can see, OK, well, we have maybe some sort of a three wave in one, then we have two, you could make a three wave in three, three wave in four, and then we have this wave 5. But this wave 5 closed and actually passed also with the wicks the 1 to 1, which is a maximum target for uh, or actually an invalidation for a wave 5, because wave 5 is not allowed to be longer than the wave three. However, it is longer than this wave three, which invalidates a leading scenario, a leading diagonal scenario in this case. So those are basically three reasons I don't like this scenario at the moment. Wave five is here then invalidated as well. Then we go to an alternative, more bullish scenario where we are looking for more upside. In this scenario, wave five is not yet finished. So we have a one, two, three, four, five. It is, however, a bit awkward. This wave four is very, very big compared to a very shallow and short wave two, which completely looks out of line in Elliott wave terms because you can actually look at Elliott waves by eye as well and go based on your feeling. Um, and this wave four is, is very big compared to a, a very short wave two. Also, the count inside this wave three would, would be a bit awkward, like one, two, three, four, and then five or five or it's you know, a bit weird but then if we look at this leading diagonal then currently we have um in this scenario wave four at least ending right above the 0 0.5 which is valid and then we have a three wave in one and we are looking basically for a three wave in this wave two 
quite difficult at the moment to find a three-way structure in this wave two, un unless it would be a complex structure like a WXY XZ type of structure, uh, but not at least a clear three-way structure. Wave two ended at the at least common target 786 for a wave two in a ending diagonal, which is fine. But actually the invalidation, in my opinion, should move a little bit to the upside to this wick over here, because I do think if we would go below this wick, there's not much support holding any bounce unless it's going to be a swing failure pattern. You take the wick and go up immediately. Uh, but I could expect more downside to come. And then eventually in this scenario, you would look for a three, four, five with five then ending in this target area over here, which for me is still a very, very interesting area for a potential short which i will highlight in my preferred scenarios we can then also look at this scenario over here which is the very bullish scenario because in this scenario we are basically in a quite high time frame wave one two one two and then now we're in the blue one two over here so we have a couple of one twos in a row and we would expect a very big wave three to the upside pumping through all the resistance and the moon is basically the next target however in this scenario Wave 2 at the moment, as it stands now, hit the 0 0.382 FIP taken from the low to the high of 1, which is a rare target for a Wave 2. Wave 2 is, however, in length uh, okay. It, it's good. It's just after the 0 0.5 Fibonacci time taken from the low to the high of 1. However, the retracement, of course, is rare. So in a Wave 2, it would officially be a little bit nicer if we have some sort of a correction that goes a little bit deeper and then move to the upside. Now, the reason I don't have a potential long trading setup over here on the chart is because I don't like the volume. So if we open the volume over here, then you can see and actually close the target areas, you can see that even though price is moving up, the volume is going down, down. Yes, we had a little bit of a spike here, but it's a spike to the downside and not a spike to the upside. And that's what you want to see. You want to see high volume up, not high volume down. So actually the volume is not supporting this very bullish scenario, which then would be a one, two, one, two, one, two. And because of the volume, ah, this is a alternative scenario. Then we go to my preferred scenario, and this is a bearish preferred scenario. So at this moment in time with this scenario, as it stands now, we have the end of a wave five finishing over here. And if we then zoom in just a little bit, this is a three wave in a expanded flat. And then we could have a WXY move in a bigger wave B. Uh, so we have an A, B and then we would be looking for an impulsive structure to the downside in a C. So this would be an expanded flat. And if we then look at this wave B and at these targets, wave B actually is a little bit too high because the wave B target is down here. So the wave B target is basically between the 1.236 and the 1.38 over here. And that is basically between 29K and 29.3K. So this is an important area for an expanded flat wave B. If this is the low of A and we are now into a three wave structure higher for a wave B. Now, if we then look at this scenario over here, I had my target box, which actually on the one hour was very well respected. We wicked below the target box and the daily that I have on my chart, but we didn't close below. And also with these two candles over here, we did not close below the daily. So that is actually quite nice. But if we then look at the CVD, which is the reason it's on my chart, we take a little peek over here. So if we have a look, then you can see compared to this low where we are right now, we have a higher low that we made, but we have a lower low on the CVD, which is bullish. Okay, that's bullish. That's basically supporting another move to the upside. Um, so this, is, this could be like a bullish divergence. The only problem I have is that we also have bearish divergences because this high over here and these highs over here, you can see it's a lower high, but on the yellow line, which is one of the two CVD lines I have, it is a higher high, which is a bearish divergence, lower high on the price, higher high on the CVD. So it's a bit of like a mixed bag of uh, divergences, which cannot really be trustworthy. So the CVD divergences at the moment, you can't really trade using these because yes, we do have bullish divergences on a bit of a higher scale. You could say, if we zoom in a little bit, the blue line over here is showing bullish divergences as well between this low, which has the blue CVD here, and then where we are now with a, like the blue CVD over here. However, we still have bearish CVD as well. So you cannot forget about this. Yes, we have a double bullish maybe, but we also have the bearish one. So this trade, this long at the moment is definitely more risky and the invalidation is therefore also quite close, which is the wick over here of X, because if we go below the uh, X wave, 
I mean, a wick maybe, but I do think we might go for lower prices because there's just not much support uh, below this X wave. So if we would then indeed move to the upside in this scenario, and we would go for a wave B, then a potential trading setup short is entering with a short position over here and then eventually trading it to the downside. Now, if we then go to my other preferred scenario, which currently might be my most preferred scenario, to be honest, is that wave five is in over here. We again have a three wave structure, but this is not going to be an ABC at the moment. This is the start of a, this is a W. So we have a nice W, then we have a nice X. This X, yes, might be short compared to W, but an X can be anything, can be very short, can be quite long. This is perfectly fine for an X wave. It's a bit more awkward for the B, but it's fine for the X. So we have a W, X, and then we would be looking for a Y, which can either be a complex structure, which is more like a channel, which then is a W, X, Y, X, Z type of structure, or it's going to be more of a three-way structure into eventually the wave Y most common target area over here which is between the 1 to 1 and the 1.236, which is between 26.9K and 26.5K. Now, we do also, in support of this scenario, have a double bottom over here, which is quite interesting for a potential liquidity grab and then move to the upside. So the only way this trading setup would actually be put into play is if we take a wick close above and then eventually move to the upside. So we call those swing failure pattern trades. Take the liquidity, move to the upside, and then the stop loss would be, would, uh, be below the low that we're gonna make with the wick. Stop loss below and then trading it to the upside because then what I'm looking for is that this three-wave structure is only the beginning of then a wave A, followed by a three-wave in the B for an expanded flat and then C to the downside. Why? Because I really, I really want to touch a couple of the areas up here. And of course, I don't know what price is going to do, but it would be good to see price hitting a couple of these areas before moving to the downside. Uh, so in this scenario, this would actually be um, a, a, a rather nice uh, scenario with a potential long setup over here and then a potential short setup to the downside. But then again, only a swing failure pattern would kind of validate this trade. So I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. I'd like to thank you for watching and also subscribing. And I will see you at my next video. Bye-bye.